I know I said my next video would be a makeup video, but I, I guess I kind of fibbed. I just didn't feel like doing that one today. I've been meaning to do another wish list video for a number of months now. I really enjoy the process of keeping a master wish list of products and people recommend things to me all the time and I watch so many YouTube videos that I love just kind of keeping a list of everything I want and kind of going through and looking back and figuring out what I want and what I don't want over time because I am also a minimalist and I like to have a thoughtfully curated selection of products, everything from makeup to beauty products more generally to lifestyle products in my life. These wishlist videos are just a way for me to put out into the universe some of the things that I would like to manifest in my life. I'm going to start with 10 beauty items and move into 10 lifestyle items. So the first thing on my beauty wish list is I think I'm curious to try one of the Honest Beauty Company bundles of products. I've seen lots of people talk about and review their things and I have to say I wasn't immediately drawn to them. It just seems slightly gimmicky for my taste, but apparently the quality of the products is supposed to be quite good for the price if you purchase them as a bundle. Above and beyond whether or not I kind of felt personally attracted to them, I would like to just be able to try them, to be able to talk about them, like here on my channel, and I'm, I'm big into having a breadth and depth of knowledge in the beauty realm. I mean, predominantly eco-beauty, which Honest Beauty is. So, Honest Beauty products that seem the most intriguing to me are the concealer, because for some reason, concealer is one of those products I always gravitate towards, wanting to try from a line. Uh, their brow pencil, because I've heard it's quite ashy and not warm. Their eye pencils, because Terry Mia here had said that it has really, really good lasting power, and I'm in need of a new replacement black eye pencil, and I also need a brown eye pencil, so I'd be curious about those. And then I'm also sort of curious about the lip crayons, although those are not as high on my list because I've heard that they're sort of similar to the Bite Beauty pencils but with a different kind of moisturized finish, which is not so much what I like. But I have heard that the lasting power and pigmentation of those is really good as well. The second thing I know I've talked about wanting before just in passing in videos, but I'm going to put it in here out to the universe. I really want another Trish McAvoy shadow stick. So I have one in the color Topaz and I really want the color Glamorous, which is a coppery, reddy, browny color. Then I also really want By Terry Brown Perfection. Actually, I think that that's definitely been in a wishlist video before. I have two by Terry Ombre Black Stars. One is Misty Rock and one is Velvet Orchid. One of my really, really amazing subscribers, Melody, sent me this by Terry Ombre Black Star and Velvet Orchid because it didn't work for her coloring and she just didn't care for it and I guess she knew how much I love these things. So I've been playing around with it and I'm really excited to do a makeup look with this. But I also want Brown Perfection to kind of round out my collection of shadow sticks. These are the only three I have, so. The third item is two nail polishes. So for some of these, I kind of slipped in multiple items, but there are two nail polishes that are really high on my wish list right now. The first is the LVX polish in the color Narcissist. I Instagrammed a picture of this. It's been like at least a month, I think, and I had just screen grabbed it from someone else's account, but it's a beautiful, mermaid teal color with micro shimmer. It's so kind of not my typical taste. Normally I'm a very classic nail color person, cream, no shimmer, but for some reason that polish is just calling to me. I don't even know why. It just looks so freaking pretty. So I really want that. And then I really want another Smith & Cult polish in Doe My Dear, which is totally a Viviana Does Makeup inspired lemming. I'm currently wearing Tenderoni on my nails right now. I've been really happy with the Smith & Cult formula. They are five free, LVX is also five free, so I feel okay about buying them. The fourth item is the Eminence Chai Berry Blush. I feel like this blush has kind of gotten semi-cult status among at least some particular YouTubers that I watch and beauty bloggers. So I know Sam, Lipstick Lady, and Andy, Techno Cupcake, it's like a holy grail blush for them, I think. I hope I'm not putting words in their mouth, but they've both raved intensely about it, and I feel like other people have as well. I still, I'm very curious to try Eminence skincare in general. I've never tried anything. MMNL rave about them, and actually you can buy Eminence products through 
their website, thebeautydestination.com. You can also get eminence at places like Derm Store and I think beauty.com or drugstore.com or some of those other big warehousey types of sites. But yes, the number one thing on my wish list is that blush because it's just supposed to be beautiful. And I did also recently return my Tarte Exposed Blush. So I'm kind of in need of a new powder neutral blush. Number five is also another blush, and it's the Antonym Baked Blushes, which I've wanted forever because they are just visually stunning to look at. And I was chatting with Aideen the other day and telling her we were both sort of hemming and hawing about the new Hourglass palette, which we all know, super pricey. The little individual palettes are quite small, so it's kind of this cost-benefit analysis, I feel like, in everyone's mind. And I am kicking myself in the ass for not purchasing the Hourglass Blush Trio when that came out because that actually really was limited edition and they kind of like weren't kidding about it. And I've been hoping they would bring it back, but they haven't yet. Blushes tend to oxidize on me, powder blushes, and go quite dark. And so I feel like, especially sometimes when I watch myself back in videos, like my older videos, I'm more conscious of it now. Blush just looks, it doesn't even like oxidize. I think it's because I have so much um, pink in my skin that it can just look like too much. And I think it's also because I wear bold lipstick a lot. Anyway, rambling. I really want at least one of the Antonym Baked Blushes. There's three shades, Copper, Rose, and Peach. I already have a peach blush, a Chanel peach blush that I really like. The Rose, I think, is I don't feel especially drawn to, so I think the Copper is the one that I'm most intrigued by. Because um, I am a big fan of just kind of a bronzy, structured look on the cheeks without too much color. Um, and I think that works well for my like chemistry and undertones. And the reason that I want one of those, aside from them being beautiful and a, you know, eco lux beautiful brand, Aideen likened the Hourglass blushes to these Antonin Baked blushes. She said they're very similar in appearance on the face. Okay, six and seven are both lipsticks. One is green and one is not. I consider one to be green. Some purists might not, but the first is not green, and it is, of course, the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Revolution lipsticks. I, I'm kind of losing track of whether or not I've mentioned these before, but regardless, it's still on my wish list. The number one lipstick from that line that I want is Love Liberty. It looks so beautiful on Lily Pebbles. She wore it a ton last year. I haven't really seen her wear it too much this year, but it's just a beautiful berry, deep berry color. And the formula of those lipsticks is meant to be like phenomenal. And I'm like a matte lipstick lover, so... And then the other three that are kind of in the queue, Glastonbury, which Hannah Maggs has worn and has been kind of her lip color of this season. It's a very dark, vampy, browny, burgundy, I guess. Bond Girl, which I feel like every beauty blogger and their mother has and has been wearing, and it looks really pretty on everybody. It's like a mauve neutral. And then Very Victoria, which I've heard fewer people talk about, but I saw Bloom and Beauty do a swatch of it. And it's like a nude, grayy, nudey. It looks really, really pretty. And then number seven, I consider Bite Beauty to be a green brand. I know some people don't because of the dyes that they use, but I really want their lipstick in the shade Violet, and they also make a high pigment pencil in the color Violet. I don't have any lipstick like that, and I think that color is really pretty. I think it's probably more appropriate for spring. The closest thing I have is like a pinky purple, something like NARS Shiop but I don't have like a true violet. And I Number eight is the Josie Marin Nirvana Mist. I think some people think I already have this because I Instagrammed a picture. I struggle with Instagram because a lot of times I'll just screenshot things that at pictures I didn't take myself. So I've kind of been struggling with that. Like if an Instagram account is meant to be all original photos that you take yourself or, you know, if it's okay to screenshot, I don't know, I'm still like, refining my ideas on how I feel about all these different social media platforms. But anyway, I do not currently have the Josie Marin Nirvana Mist, and I would like it, predominantly because Aideen also told me that it's one of her favorite mists to use to dampen a beauty blender. Every time I go into a Sephora, I like douse my face in the Nirvana Mist, and I do really like it. I believe it rates a 3 on EWG, potentially a 2. I did look it up. It's beautiful. It's very light. And I honestly do feel like it imparts a really moisturized, dewy look to the face. Number nine probably is not a surprise. I really want the K.R. Weiss foundation. The only K.R. Weiss product I am fortunate enough to have in my life 
is the highlighter in Radiance. Uh, a friend gave me a gift certificate to Eco Diva Beauty and I finally bit the bullet and got one of these beautiful, basically pieces of art and makeup combined in my life. So I really feel like I would get the most use out of something like the foundation. I think I'm probably the shade Paper Thin. So I really want it. And I also really want the bronzer, but that's kind of lower on the priority list. And then number 10, I think that Alima Pure must have done like a PR push with a bunch of bloggers because I've seen multiple people use this and talk about it. it are the Alima Pure eye pencils. They're supposed to be quite good. In particular, I'm curious about the white one, which I've seen TT Sandra use. I feel like I've talked about this before, but anyway, I want that white Alima Pure pencil for the lower waterline to brighten. And I also want to try their brown eye pencil because I'm really in need of a brown eye coal. I would welcome your brown eye pencil recommendations. So the first item in the lifestyle category is I would like a full size of the Nieves Cloud of Protection Mist. I have, I'm almost out. I probably have like two more uses of this. This is basically a room spray that's full of essential oils. oils. I only got the one ounce. I think I got this last year around this time. Super happy with it. It's just an, I'm so into keeping my living space smelling nice, high vibrations, good energy moving. I burn Palo Santo regularly. I burn candles all the time. I diffuse essential oils, and this is just something additionally nice to do a little pick me up. Number two, it's been a while since I've had an Alexis Smart flower remedy in my life, and the one that I want that's on my wish list is her Beauty Number no. Eight formula. I've tried two I think in the past. I've tried Soul Purpose and I can't remember either In Love or Wholehearted, something for the heart chakra because I was doing a bunch of heart chakra work in the last like six months. Beauty number eight sounds like a very intriguing formula to me. I'm always like constantly trying to anti-age and so I feel like this would just be a nice addition. It's supposed to kind of let your inner radiance come through. So I don't, you know, who knows if it would make any kind of like obvious difference, uh, but yeah, curious about it. Number three, I've been watching way too much Nikki Blackadder, like literally still obsessed with her, and it's made me want a whole bunch of new leggings and like workout gear in particular, but especially leggings. So I have a couple pairs of Lululemons, so I would like to get a few new pairs of Wonder Unders. That's my favorite legging that they make. And the Wonder Unders are great to work out in because they're very thick and kind of serve as compression as well on your muscles when you're lifting. And then she also wears a lot of Nike leggings and they're more moderately priced than the Lululemon ones and look pretty good. So I just need new gym leggings basically. Number four, I've seen lots of people talk about these. Most recently, Vanessa Bombshell Sweet, who I adore, and Michelle1218, or 1218, however people say her name, they both have raved about the Barcelona camis from Express. I never shop at Express. I used to, I think, when I was like in college. I have not been in an Express in a really long time. But those Barcelona camis are so cute, and I think that they're perfect wardrobe staples to have around for layering and you can get really good deals on them so i'd like to pick up just a couple neutral colors like black gray they have a really nice kind of like army green white uh, number five are some books i feel like i get asked a lot by friends um what my like book recommendations are what i'm reading so i'm currently rereading the untethered soul if you're curious i've like talked about that book so much but the things that are currently sitting in my Amazon cart, I thought that I would tell you about, and they're on my wish list. So the first is Between the World and Me by Tendahizi Coates. I'm a huge fan of his writing. He writes for The Atlantic. He's basically a social scientist and writes on race relations in the US. So I'm really curious to read that book of his. The second one is Anatomy of the Spirit by Carolyn Meese, I think is how you pronounce her name. That would be my spiritual upcoming pick. My chiropractor recommended that to me. I don't really know anything about it. The third is the book Baking by Hand by Andy King. I was recently at this like amazing, amazing little cafe in Salem, Massachusetts with a friend of mine. I am a sucker for cafes. I don't know. I don't think I've talked about it that much on here. I love to bake. I took a bunch of French patisserie classes when I was in graduate school. So I can like make croissants and puff pastry by hand. I don't really do it that much anymore, but I love to bake. I love working with dough in general. 
So baking by hand, that's like has my name all over it. Number six is also related to my recent Nikki Blackadder obsession and it's some workout accoutrement. Basically, I want to invest in some knee sleeves. There's a brand called Rayband, I think, R-E-H-B-A-N-D. And they're just supposed to provide extra support and like keep your knees warm and protected when you're squatting. I don't really have knee pain, but because I've gotten increasingly more into lifting and going to the gym over the last like two years, probably I really want to protect my joints so that they don't decay prematurely, I guess. So I think knee sleeves would be a good investment for when I'm squatting and leg pressing and stuff like that. And then I also want to get some wrist supports because while I don't notice any pain in my knees, I often do feel like my wrists are relatively weak. And I noticed that even before I started lifting more regularly and was just very into doing like lots of power yoga, my wrists would like, I, they would just bother me. So I think wrist supports would be a good idea. Number seven, someone recently asked me about this and it's a product I've known about for a while and I've always been curious about and it's an earthing sheet. So if any of you have earthing sheets, I would love to hear about your experience with them. If you don't know what they are, they're basically, it's basically a way to connect to the earth's energy. So there's this whole philosophy around the benefits that you can get from like walking barefoot on the beach or walking barefoot in your yard that you're basically able to absorb the earth's energy, which assists in giving you your most vibrant health. And so having an earthing sheet, they come in all different sizes. They can be like a, the full, for the full like size of your bed. They can be very small just to put your feet on or to cover the length of a yoga mat or things like that. But basically they're supposed to offset all of the sort of electromagnetic radiation and things that we're exposed to now with internet and radio waves. I don't really like know all the science behind it, but this is basically my understanding of it. And you plug the sheet into like a grounding wire and that's, it's supposed to basically neutralize your exposure to electronic devices. I'd be very curious to see how it would affect my life. Um, I've heard a lot of people, it helps with their sleep, it helps with their mood, it helps with their energy, but who knows, right? Like, I don't buy into this stuff hook, line, and sinker. I'm just kind of like curious. Number eight are two sort of little boutique food or supplement companies. The first is Four Sigma Foods. I'd be very curious to try some of their supplements. They're basically a medicinal mushroom company. You can buy like coffee and tea and like energy drinks. Um, and they're basically utilizing all of sort of the antioxidants and health promoting benefits of mushrooms and like kind of specialized mushroom varieties like ch Chinese mushrooms and reishi mushrooms or however you pronounce it. And then uh, Jamie recently told me about a Boston based company called Apothecar's Kitchen and they make honey sweetened marshmallows and chocolates and they just look amazing. The marshmallows are also an excellent way to get um, high quality grass-fed gelatin into your diet if you're a traditional foodist like I am. Number nine is the Star Child Tarot deck. I currently only have one deck, the Rider Weight, which is kind of like the most generic basic tarot deck that you can have. I don't even remember where I learned about the Star Child Tarot deck, but just go to the website and look at the images that are presented. It's like divinely beautiful. I just look at that and I'm like, I just, I need that in my life. I believe the deck is sold out of like its first printing. And so you can pre-order it. And it's, a, I think it's a Canadian based company because the price is in Canadian. It's 45 US dollars, which this kind of pricey, but I sort of consider things like this to be both a spiritual tool and also kind of a uh, house decor in a way. Um, so yeah, I just think that deck looks so beautiful and I love how the edge is all gold. Obsessed. And then I feel like I always end with a piece of jewelry. And so my 10th lifestyle wish list item is an Eddie Borgo cone bracelet in particular after looking through all of them, they have a rose quartz one. Yes, I really want that thing. I learned about these from watching a little bit, etc. She did a what she got for her birthday 
That girl has so much nice shit. Like, I don't even, like, wow. Eddie Borgo bracelets I had never heard of. And they're just these really, really kind of pretty but edgy, uh, spiky cone bracelets and they come in tons of different colors and the rose quartz one looks really beautiful. Thank you guys so much for tuning in with me this week and listening to me manifest my desires to the universe. Please do let me know if you have any of these things, have tried them, love them, hate them, have other suggestions for me. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you'd like to keep up with my videos. I try and upload twice a week. You can give me a thumbs up if you liked this video and follow me on other forms of social media. The ones I am most active on are Instagram and Pinterest. I'm trying to tweet more. It's just like really not my thing. I find Twitter so boring currently. Not on Periscope, not on Snapchat. I have boundaries with social media penetration in my life. I will see you guys on Sunday with my next video, which I don't yet know what that will be, but I will figure it out and I'll see you then, bye.